Making modern foreign languages optional at GCSE had a predictable, if depressing, effect at his school in Yorkshire. Normally, in years 10 and 11, we'd have 250 pupils doing a language. Well, the first year that we went optional, we went to 62. But staff at Beckfoot School in Bingley refused to accept what looked like the inevitable decline in the subject's appeal to pupils. What we wanted to do was try to see whether we could develop um, fast-track modern languages within years 7, 8 and 9 when we knew that kids had to do modern languages and enjoyed doing modern languages and we thought well why not see if we can accredit them for their achievement whilst they're very fired up and, and excited by it. The MFL department agreed the new approach and after discussions with the school's senior management team in 2003 they put it on trial. A selected cohort of higher ability year 8 pupils embarked on French GCSE two years early. We rank ordered according to how they'd done in the assessment and we took into account teacher recommendation and we took say the top quartile and we wrote the parents of the top pupils and said this is what we were proposing to do did they have any concerns only one actually said no so all you need to do is come up and tap on the right one there are 10 questions that we Results were encouraging. Uh, I opened my results and out of the 30 pupils, I'd got 27 who had got A star to C and three of those were grade A. And then the German teacher came in, Jill Halls, and she'd got 29 of her 31 had got A star to C and she'd got 11 grade A's. This programme explains how the staff and pupils have now developed the trial into a fully-fledged project, which is resulting in pupils achieving qualifications at a younger age. Enjoying language learning... ..and increasing uptake of the subject in Key Stage 4. I think it's a really good opportunity for us to speak another language and I think it's it's good for our learning because you like you get to learn what they speak in Fran France and they get to learn what we speak here so it brings France and England together. To make the fast track scheme work the school believes you have to have a number of key ingredients in place. You've got to be secure in the knowledge that you've got a strong, forward-thinking department. You've got to be secure in the knowledge that they're teaching well. There isn't a major impact on your curriculum. You might have to put some additional support in, but we've only had to find one more hour to make this work. OK. Uh, anybody else give me a sentence? Nous aimons à la pizzeria. Excellent. Nous aimons. Well done. Nous aimons. Allez à la pizzeria. Right. Um, the expectations of the pupils also needed managing. We went in on day one and we said, this is what you're going to have to do. It's a big task. We're not going to hide it. It is difficult. You're going to be doing GCSE two years early. They were quite daunted, I think, some of them. But then they rose to the challenge. They were fantastic. We made sure we could support them in terms of um, the kind of populations and the setting arrangements that they wanted to put in place to make sure all kids could be stretched. And we wanted to see if it could work. Yeah, and shots. Qu que say, Sebastian? Shots. Save young super. How does it work in the classroom? So in year seven, they study the basics of the language. And then into year eight, they start on the actual GCSE syllabus. And they study that for the two years and then obviously entered for their exams at the end of year nine which means for us that in those two years we've obviously got to teach them any of the grammar that's needed for GCSE. Je m'appelle Jean Smith <laughs> et je reste dans le hotel de la gare. As we do the coursework option, we need to make sure that every student has three pieces of coursework that can be submitted at the end of year nine and also prepare them for the speaking exam, which they also do at the end of year nine. Let's try again. So it does seem that in a two-year period there is a lot to be covered, but we find that if we keep it pacey and we keep it focused and we make sure the students are fully aware right from the beginning what it is they're working towards, that in most cases we get 
we get the results at the end. Well, for me, it was really good because like, I work well if I've got like a short-term goal, and that meant that I can really throw myself into the French, and I, could, I did really well out of it because um, having the shorter time period, I could just concentrate on that. Um, and it also got me a lot more enthusiastic about languages because once you get good at something, it's much easier to like it. There's so much negativity around languages and people aren't choosing them. And the fact that they have to do, do it in year nine, first of all, they're keen about it, they're enthusiastic about it, they've got a girl. And some will want to go on and continue it. Others, they know that they can do this. Like, we've done this in year nine and we're getting GCSE grades, so they want to do maybe another language, Spanish or German, which we offer as well. Since you can do it two years early, you're doing it when you're not doing any of the GCSEs, so there's much less pressure. <laughs> I find that the year nines, as a whole, are more confident in speaking in front of the class and not as afraid of making a mistake in front of the class um, as opposed to the year 11s who are very conscious of making any mistake in front of their peers. Well, go on, that's it. Jem Leeds. Jem Leeds. Jem. Jem Leeds. The pronunciation from some students hasn't been perfect, but they've not minded when it's been corrected because they want to know how to say it properly, so it tends to be better with year nines. That's fantastic. Je n'aime pas aller faire des omplettes is a really good sentence. Don't you like going shopping? <laughs> boring. Which? She's a boring. Shh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a French auntie. My uncle married a French woman. So we go over there a lot in the summer holidays. So now I can buy things from shops and not just put it on the counter and smile. Teachers found that they needed to adapt their style and methods to make this work for the pupils. All right, we're going to sit next to Dad, please. Jake, are you going to be sensible? Yeah. Très bien. They didn't realise how much they needed to revise for this, and that's just the immature um, side of being a, a year nine and not doing it in all subjects and not being geared up for it by everyone, so it was our responsibility. So I think we would say we've learnt from mistakes there and that we are pushing um, that so much more this year. What I found we've had to do is become much more focused with what we teach them. If we're preparing for a piece of coursework, we have to make sure that the information they're given is very focused on that piece of work and it will be all of it is relevant to that piece of work. So, yes, we do have to make sure our planning is a lot tighter that we know for each half term, we must cover a certain amount of content and we must make sure that's all covered. And so it is really important that the students stay attentive, but they still like the idea that we keep pushing with them that, look, you're special, you're doing this as a GCSE two years early. And that keeps them quite infused. I'll tell you what, the, the best thing to do with these is, isn't it, to find the ones you do know first of all, OK? We find you can pretty much get the three pieces from any student. As long as they're in school and they don't have, they don't have any long-term absence, we can get enough from even the most low-ability student to get them to achieve a grade G at GCSE. And for some students, that will be their only GCSE. Inevitably, there were teething problems, initially with setting. We couldn't set as rigorously due to the way the groups had been organised. Um, so that's something that we're looking to do because we did find that having the pure top ability groups, we could really push them and you can go to slower pace with the lower ability, whereas we haven't got as pure sets at the moment, so that, that's a problem. One problem that was tackled early was resources. Staff found that their own tailor-made resources was the best approach. Every Monday we have um, an hour and a half after school where departments meet together and, and plan. So in that time we've made loads and loads of resources. We don't use textbooks, we make our own resources and they're usually for use on the interactive whiteboard. We use a grid system where we'll have 12 pictures to help them learn vocabulary. Touch one. Oh, 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 out with Jonathan. Oh, I definitely encourage anyone younger than me to take up fast track because um, it's it's a easier GCSE to get at that age. You've got more time to do it, and it's opened up the opportunity for me wow. to take other languages at GCSE because I've managed to take a fast track Spanish yeah. as well. Yeah. And also because it's enabled me to take on the AS for German. 
it's really good preparation for your A-levels because I understand a lot more about them now. And I can take another AS as well. I'll have an extra one for going to university, which I think is really valuable. In the two years the idea has been running, results are mixed. The top set group achieved an impressive 97% A to C. The following year, a more mixed cohort achieved 22% A to C or 97% A to G. The big success is, of course, that pupils are going to leave with a GCSE language, which they might not have done under the current system. Because I'd done the, uh, the fast track, I then had the option of doing, moving, you know, carrying on with AS, and because I enjoyed the, um, the GCSE lessons, I thought, yeah, I'll carry on, do the AS. Um, otherwise, I, I don't know if I would have done, because I might not have decided to pursue languages as I moved into A-level. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it was a good idea. I think I would recommend following this fast-track idea to other teachers in other schools because all students are keen to learn whilst they're in lower school. They're still enthusiastic to learn, they want to speak. So how would you say I like to watch? J'aime <laughs> regarder. And you can see achievement from students in quite a short time and that's obviously, as a teacher, it's fantastic to see when a student in year nine is producing a piece of work that is getting them a grade A, grade A star, then it's just it's such a buzz, you get such a buzz from that and seeing that from students. And even at the opposite end, students who can just about put a sentence together in French are producing a piece of written work, even if it's just 10 short sentences that's getting them a grade F or grade, perhaps a grade G, you get a certain buzz from that. And we're also, able to give them other options at GCSE as well, so opening up Spanish to students, giving students who've done GCSE French the opportunity to do German in two years. And so we're producing some fantastic linguists in school. And the spin-offs are actually getting those kids to be, developing the maturity and developing the design and, and, and combating that classic dip we often get in year eight and nine has a tremendous positive spin-off for the school. So. Um, I would, I would, I would, I'd really encourage it. I think it's, 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 it's well worth doing. I think the the whole accelerated learning idea, um, tapping into pupils' learning styles, has been a boom for for both higher and lower ability. Um, a lot of the lower abilities like to be up and active and doing things. Um, they find the writing part difficult. So I think yes, it has helped them as well. We thought laterally about a situation where where it would have been very easy to have possibly lost languages forever because you know if you if you take languages out of a core and you don't do anything different to it you're going to lose quality staff we're going to move on elsewhere and, and i'm not sure you can ever come back from that it would have been incredibly difficult so what we've been able to do is secure languages within the curriculum we've been able to secure quality staff within our curriculum and we've been able to keep its profile high why should the pupils waste effectively two years when we can push them, you know, get them doing things that very few people in the country are doing. We're given the option of getting GCSEs in two languages over five years. I just think we're, it's something we have to do because if we didn't, then we were doing a disservice to the to the kids, really. C'est bien, super, no, that's not bad with the new ones. Okay, back up some A-Lists.